Hello everybody, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Well, it turns out I'm going to have some extra time on my hands for the next uh, six to eight weeks. Uh, unfortunately, I had a, an accident at work the other night here. I'll just show you here real quickly. I broke the tip of my finger there. There's no fingernail. and It's quite a mess anyway, so uh, I'm not going to be able to go to work and, and uh, there's not a lot I could do right now, but I don't need uh, I don't need that hand to make videos. I can make videos with my left hand. So I thought I'd, I'd uh, make a few videos for you. Um, so you'll see a few videos over the next uh, little while. I don't want to make any global 40, 40 strategy videos uh, or anything like that because um, I'm going to be going to uh, Grasshoppers tournament. This finger isn't going to keep me out of that. So uh, I'm going to be going there, and um, I don't think it'd be fair to my teammate or to me if I made some strategy videos just before I go. Uh, him and I have each put out uh, some strategy videos, but that's only one strategy each for for uh, each nation. I don't even think he made them for more than a couple of nations. So that's not a big deal. There, there's a lot of different strategies and and uh, if people think that they know what we're gonna do just because they watch those videos, then they're gonna, they're gonna be sadly mistaken. But I don't wanna make any more before then. Uh, I might get back to making some uh, rules videos uh, after I do a series of 1914 videos. And I'm not sure exactly all the different 1914 videos I'm going to make. Uh, I, I have the board set up because I had one of my subscribers come here last weekend. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we played 24 hours in three days. We played a couple of days of Global 40 and then the last day on Sunday we played uh, 1914. So the board was still set up on uh, for from Sunday and, and I thought I might as well make a few videos. I had been putting it off because I hadn't uh, really touched this game for, whew, I don't know, six, eight months. Um, once I started uh, playing around with my Global 40 game there, uh, I was pretty excited about that. And, Anyway, so uh, the, the 14 game is set up, and, and so I'll make a few videos of that over the next uh, few days here. Anyway, so um, you might have seen the video that I made the other day of the 1914. Uh, it was a, kind of a recap of, of what the, the game that Rich Jurstad and I played, Rich Jurstad from uh, Prince Rupert. Um, anyway, so this is uh, the opening setup from the game. And I thought I'd just do a video on the setup and, and on my uh zeppelins sorry i was trying to think of what they were uh on my zeppelins I'll, I'll but i'll show you all the stuff that i have and and show you where you can get these uh customizations and i don't have a lot of customizations for this but uh, i do have some here let me just uh step step back a bit here so you can see this is uh imperious leaders uh beautiful map that he made um and that's a free download that you can take in and into your local uh print shop and get it done uh, on whatever substance you want to put it on and whatever material. Uh, but I told you about that in the last video too. I'll just make this video as if I hadn't made that last video. That way if this is the first one that you see then then uh, then you can see it. But here I'll just I'll just walk around and, and let you see this map. Uh, he he put uh, he put these things on here instead of that goofy ass uh, income tracker that was there before and you see the mobilization zone it's got the costs of everything um i really like the map that he did though he put the turn sequence on there that's that's a big help but uh my map here the the regular map is 32 by 32 uh i uh, i measured my table and seen how much space i i had and so uh, to give myself a little bit of extra room i made it 42 by 42. the file that he created is double the size so you could make a 64 by 64 map if you wanted. Um, but anyway, as you see, like he, he put all the roundels on there from the different countries and stuff. Um, let's just walk around. You see in here, there's the picture of the plane in there. And there's one of a boat underneath those French boats there. It's, a, it's just a, a really nice job that he did. I tell you, if you like this game, and uh, it is a fun game. It's not my favorite one of Axis and Allies. I, I, I really love Global 40. But if you like this game, then, uh, then this is a great addition to have. Instead of having little creases and your guys are falling over. Plus, you can make it a little bit bigger. Like here, let, let me just get up close to Europe here. Uh, if you play this game a lot, then you know how much space is in Europe. Oh, it looks like I'm missing some artillery in there. 
But, um, or no, maybe that's the one that doesn't get artillery. But look at how much space there is in there. Um, with this game, uh, you get contested territories. So there could be two nations in the same, or maybe even more, two or three or four nations in the same space, occupying the same space. You only get one one turn, uh, one combat round to roll. So you could have uh, more than one nation that stays in, in, in a space. So it is nice to have that extra space. And this is quite a bit more space. What is that, 25% larger than the regular map? So it is handy having that extra space. And what else do I have on here? Well, uh, I've got, uh, you see these black people here. <laughs> Somebody asked me a question about that. Um, these are just, what are they? Russians. You can see that uh, brown on the bottom there. I just spray painted uh, some old Axis and Allies dudes and some old Axis and Allies artillery because I like to put uh, um, the neutral uh, units on. Uh, not only on this board, but on my Global 40 board as well. Uh, I just like to do that, um, have them represented like that. Normally what you do, like uh, this space here is worth four. So you double it, that would make eight, but uh, you, you subtract one. So we have seven infantry and then one artillery. And that's how you, you get to eight. You, the last thing is going to be an artillery. So I just put the, the, the seven dudes on there in an artillery rather than just leaving it empty and... and uh, and then just putting something on there when when somebody goes to attack it. It reminds me that that um, that there are units there um, and that it hasn't been attacked yet, or if it has, how many units are left. So uh, that's just one thing I like to do. And you know, if you bought this game, that they don't give you uh, any extra units. That's for sure. In fact, they don't give you enough units to play the game. So if you have to start putting those units on neutral territories as well, then that's going to take away from. Um, from uh, the units that you have in your tray. So, uh, I mean, you, and you don't even have to paint them. You can just take any units out of your Axis and Allies game and throw them on on, on the neutral territories. Uh, anyway, so that's one thing that I've done. So we got the map and those and uh, what else? Uh, you can see I got the flight stands on, on the fighters here. Not all of them, uh, not nearly as many as my uh, Global 40 game. I think I got a couple on the German ones and a couple on the French ones and a couple on the British ones, but uh, the other ones are only one each, I think, uh, because you know, you're not going to you're not going to buy a lot of fighters for the Italy or or for uh, uh, the Ottoman Empire. There, they're just uh, they they don't get much money, right? Uh, the other thing I've got is I've got these things here. These are great here. Let's just let's just put uh, an air base on to Berlin here. Let me set the camera down. I've only got one hand, right? So. I mean, uh, if I try to use this hand, and I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be knocking everything over, right? So we'll put, we'll put an airbase on Berlin there. Looks like I'm, and I'm not left-handed either, so this is gonna be a little awkward. Um, and then uh, we'll put, uh, we'll put this on there. So uh, the reason I bought these, uh, you can get them at historical board gaming. The reason I bought them is because the game is unbalanced. I think just about everybody can agree that the game is unbalanced and that the allies have the advantage in this game. Um, so I, I, in an effort to try to balance out the game, and I still haven't reached a, a, a balance yet, I, I bought two Zeppelins. And so what I do when I play is one goes on Berlin like that, and then the other one, the player decides, uh, whoever's playing Germany decides. So what I would do, uh, if I it probably is, is put it right here, like right next to Berlin, because you want to get it in the place where where a person might uh, might attack last. You know, the, uh, a place where where you can um, where you can defend the best, right? So I would probably put them both there, or maybe you could put them put one in Hanover or in Munich or something like that. But you wouldn't put it on the front line, obviously, because those bases can be can be attacked as well. Uh, so, and you know, I don't have any hard and fast rules on these. I've just been playing around with them. So uh, I started out just uh, just uh, adding them to the game, and then the player would have to purchase them. The German player, and that didn't work uh, because um, because if you're buying those, then you're not buying ground units, and then the game is still unbalanced. So then I tried giving the German player one zeppelin and one base, and then they had to buy the other one, and still 
that didn't work out, uh, that didn't balance the game. So what I've what I've come to now is but is to just give them two bases and and two zeppelins and <laughs> see if they can win the game like that. And then if you lose a zeppelin, then it's going to cost twelve IPCs to replace it. The base is going to cost eight IPCs to replace it. Um, the base is something that you'd have to attack as well. Like if you were going to attack this territory here, then the base is a unit as well. And it just defends at one. And that just signifies um, that there is uh, a, a unit there. Um, unlike the Global 40 game where uh, you have an anti-aircraft gun, the, 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 this game is a lot different in that uh, you don't do any strategic bombing in this game really. Uh, you just have the fighters, so the air war is is not not anything like it is in Global Forty. So it wouldn't make any sense to strategic bomb these bases. Uh, I'll just uh, say that there's there's um, uh, a garrison of infantry there, and they defend at one uh, because it's a small garrison. So uh, the zeppelins um, what I've come to is that they can move six bases, and they would attack at three and defend at two. Now in the game. Uh, for fighters, uh, you know, like they 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 uh, move two spaces, but they stay. Like let's say uh, this fighter here was going to attack Poland. Let's move this back. So among other things, uh, this this fighter attacks Poland, and you move some stuff in. Now that fighter stays there. He doesn't move after that because there's only one movement phase in in a turn, right? You you don't uh, move it out afterwards. There, there's no non-combat movement after your turn is over. But with these uh, zeppelins, what I've done is. You can move that in there, so that's moved two spaces. Now you can move four more spaces on a non-combat move, and it's only the zeppelins. They're the only ones that get to move a second time during your turn. Um, what they will do is they will absorb one hit, so you can go in there and then the, fr uh, the first uh, casualty that uh, the, the Russians hit the Germans on, you could just say, okay, that's the zeppelin is, is, taking, its, uh, is taking that hit. Uh, but that doesn't mean the Zeppelin is, is uh, dead yet, it just, uh, it's damaged. And so then at the end of your turn, uh, at the end of combat, you can choose to leave it in there if you'd like. Or you can move it back to uh, the, the base, um, the airship base, and uh, just moving it back there at the beginning of your turn on the, the repair units phase where you repair your battleships, then that will repair the zeppelin and you don't have to pay anything it'll just repair it for free so that's the that's how it works on combat is is attacking at uh three and defending at two and it can and it can move out of the space unlike anything else okay so the other thing is is that you can use this to strategic bomb but not uh there's no obviously there's no other bases on the board but what you would do is like say you you would go one two three uh, four into London here and then you just roll a dice uh, you try to get a three or less kind of like um, the sub uh, uh, convo convoying something in, in global 40 you have to hit at a three or less because these aren't going to do a huge amount of damage right the, these zeppelins um, and not necessarily to civilian targets either I mean they'd be lucky if they hit something good right they're probably more more likely going to hit homes or, or really hit nothing and so, uh, so, and th there's no defense against them as there was not in, in the, in the war, like they, they were silent, right? So they just flew overhead and they started dropping bombs and, and nobody knew they were there until the bombs landed, right? And then they would leave. So it's just going to come over and you're going to roll the dice if that's what you choose to do with it. You can't do both. You can't attack and do a strategic bombing raid. So you roll the dice. If you get a one to three, then you would take that much money off, off of, um, uh, in this case, it would be the UK, and then they'd have two movements points left, so they could go, you know, that they could free, they could uh, non-combat move back. So that's uh, that's another thing that they can do, and then the third thing that they could do is uh, is something that they also did, and that is uh, transport. They can transport units, but um, only on non-combat though. So uh, you can you can either transport two infantry or one artillery but not one infantry one artillery like they just they're, they're not a ship okay they're just a, a zeppelin so that uh, uh, transporting too much would be too heavy for them so they can uh, only transport either what two infantry or one artillery and they can go their six spaces right so you could go one 
two, uh, three, four, five, six. Let's let's just say he went down here. Then then uh, because this is a friendly space, you couldn't go into combat. So you go to a friendly space, and then you can unload the two dudes down there, right? And then those dudes could make it over to Africa. Or let me see, what else could they have done? One, uh, two, three, four, five. Like they they could they could have got to here. Uh, but they, they couldn't have made it all the way to Africa, but that's close enough. Like he, if you wanted to get some, some dudes down to Africa, that would be a help, wouldn't it? Uh, I don't know that you wouldn't want to uh, move this down to Africa. Uh, you could, but then you're, you're quite a ways out of the way, like for getting back. Right. Plus, um, uh, they're, you're outnumbered down here. So you wouldn't want to lose that thing because it's worth 12 IPCs. That's the same, the same price as a battleship. But you know, if you really wanted to win Africa, you could take two dudes down there and then you could use that to help. And uh, it, you remember the, the rules as far as gaining air superiority uh, with, uh, and that's what you use fighters for, right? To, to gain your air superiority, to upscale your artillery. Well, these work the same way as that uh, in combat is uh, they, they, uh, they make your artillery plus one, just like a fighter would. So, I mean, that is something that you could think about if you, but there's not a lot of money left down there in, in uh, Africa, but that, that would be one option to you. You could take two infantry down there and then you could use uh, that, but the, the, there's only one artillery down there. So that's not gonna help you too much, but it is gonna give you that, uh, that uh, three um, on offense. But you got to remember also that there's no seaplane, or not seaplane, uh, airship bases down there to repair your airship if it gets one damage point. Because on the second damage point, then that airship is lost. And then if you buy another one, then it has to go on an airship base. You can't buy it and put it anywhere. It has to go on one of your airship bases. So that's how that's how I'm I'm using the zeppelins. Uh, perhaps you can uh, suggest something in in uh, the comment section of this video. Um, or comment on what you think I've done with those. Th there is rules, and, and I did uh, kind of simulate a bit of what they had on on historical board gaming, where you buy them. You know, like they had their own rules, but it just seemed to me that the cost structure was way out of line. Like uh, the the cost was 16 IPCs, and you know, like if you paid 16 IPCs, then Germany's going to lose the game because they don't have enough ground units, right? Uh, so it, it had to be something where, you know, it's going to help the central powers, not something where it's, it's going to make it even or where it's going to, um, lower, uh, their ability to fight. And so that's why I've done it the way I've done it, but maybe you can find a better way. But I tell you, it is fun though. Um, you, you gotta like the, these, uh, let me just show you one of the boxes over here. Um, so you see the boxes here, like there's the Germany box. There isn't a lot of units. There isn't a lot of different unit types. So adding one more unit type to the game makes the game a little bit more complex because the game is pretty damn simple the way it is, right? It's mostly just dudes moving along the ground and that's it. And as far as your ship go, ships go out here, there's not a lot to be done with that either. There's not destroyers and subs and they negate each other and things like that. The only thing is with subs is that they get to move through a hostile sea zone and cruisers get to go one space extra. There's, there's really nothing special about the ships in this game either. So adding something like that adds a little bit more complexity to the game. And so and as far as I'm concerned, it's, it makes the game a little bit more fun. So you can think about adding Zeppelins to your game. And when I did, I didn't, uh, I, you know, like I added Zeppelins to the game before I purchased those Zeppelins. What I did was I just used uh, aircraft carriers from uh, from one of the other axes in LS games, just to simulate it, right? Because there are no aircraft gear carriers in this game, so there's no way that you could you could confuse that with, with some other unit. And uh, you know, just because it's long and thin, so I, I use those. So if you want, you can try that. Uh, just grab a cup, grab yourself a couple of aircraft carriers, and and put it in this game, and and just see if you like the zeppelins. And if you do, then then go to historical board gaming. And order them. Um, the, anyway, they're, they're they're really cool, I think, and they add something to the game. So what else do we got here? Uh, oh, I, I know. I could show you these things over here. I will give you a link to to find uh, the uh, the where to get this map. 
and uh, where to get the Zeppelins. And then also this right here. These are cards made by a person by, who goes by the name of Soup on AccessAndAllies.org. So these are really nice cards that he, he, he made. A, he did a really nice job of them. And you can see it's got all the costs and everything on there. And uh, it, it tells you where they go. So here, let me just show you. Like the, the, these are the ones that you get out of box, right? Uh, and so he's put all that stuff on there uh, where, where to put them. And uh, and he's put some other things on there, you know, like uh, how to do an amphibious assault, sea combat, land combat, order of play, turn sequence. So that's kind of cool. There's the Russian one. And there's the American one. There's the one from France. The one thing about this, though, there was a mistake on, on the France one. You can see here were uh, battleships. I don't know if you can see that, but it shows you a, a, two battleships here. This uh, this one on the left wasn't shown on, on the card. Uh, so I, uh, I, I I couldn't figure out how to do it myself on my own computer. But where when I went to the store to get them to print these off for me and to laminate them, I, I had them add a one on here. And the one doesn't look exactly like the other one, but it looks close enough, right? So if you do print them off yourself, and you, you can't figure that out. Just remember there should be another French battleship in there. But otherwise, these cards are really nice. I really like them. Um, there's Italy right there. And you can see in the background, it, it shows a, a picture of the nation where they are, right? Um, and there's the Ottoman Empire. And there's and you can see the Ottoman Empire is, is underneath there. And the British. You see the British Isles in there. But I'll show, I, I will give you a link to the thread on accessandallies.org where you can find these. And then you just have to click on the link there. And I think it downloads it automatically for you onto your computer. And then you just uh, then you just print them off. You can uh, put it on a, a, a memory stick and take it down and print it off. Or you can, uh, or, or uh, you can just print it off yourself on your own computer. That's, uh, that would be the cheapest thing that you can do. And what else do we got here? Um, I don't know if you've ever played tournament rules. I, I like the tournament rules better than the out-of-box rules. So I will provide a link to the tournament rules for that as well. And so here, here we got, I, I, what I did was I printed off the tournament rules. And I, I did it on both sides. And there's, there's six pages to it, right? So that there's all the rules that you need to play tournament rules. And the biggest difference with tournament rules and um, and out of box rules is the movement. Instead of moving one space, um, your units will move two spaces. Uh, we're talking about your ground units here, but uh, it depends. Like you, you couldn't move two. Like um, let me see here. This guy here couldn't move two spaces into here. You have to move two spaces into a territory where you or your ally is is already there so uh if this guy was here then you could move two spaces into there even though it's a, a contested zone but you you can't move it into a, a hostile zone where you don't have any any units in but there's more there's more to do with it than that but that's basically the biggest difference and also the economic and political collapse rules and uh you know <laughs> Uh, you, you may or may not like those rules, but I mean, you, you could just, uh, you could use them, you could not use them. Um, and also there's, uh, normally uh, with these, uh, where these anchors are, these are, these would be your naval ports. Uh, that doesn't make your ships go an extra space in out of box rules. But in the tournament rules, that does make your ships go an extra space. So your ships would be going three spaces instead of two. And there's not very many sea zones in this game. So you can make it quite a long ways, especially with a cruiser, which normally goes three. If you started at a, at a, a naval base, like here, if you were here, you're one, two, three, four. You could go all the way from England down to down to Italy down here in, in one turn. So that, that's another big difference. So I'll, I will leave in the, in the, uh, description box below the video I'll leave a link to that as well where you can pick up these tournament rules and the reason uh, they're tournament rules and why they, they've created them is um, if you played out of box rules that uh, you know that, it, that everything moves along pretty slowly because everybody only goes one space right 
well, uh, with the tournament rules and with people being able to go two spaces, then and with the collapse rules, um, it, it just it makes a game go a lot faster. A game will not take as long to play if you're playing tournament rules, and so that's why they were created so that uh, they could uh, play games a lot faster, and that that uh, that's important when you're playing a tournament because I mean people don't take three weeks off of work to play in a tournament, right? It's only a couple of days, and so you got to get uh, a number of games in in two or three days, and and so that's why the tournament rules were created. Ah, oh, what else? You've probably seen my boxes for Global 40 before. Uh, these are the ones that I use for um, these boxes here. They're the ones that I use for 1914. And they're smaller. Like you, they're, they're, you don't get very many units in there. So there was no need to, to have uh, uh, bigger boxes than that. And uh, of course a historical board game. And you can get these nice, uh, these nice uh, roundels. They're a little bit better than the cardboard ones that you get out of box, but that's a bit of a luxury. They're they're pretty expensive. Um, I kind of go overboard on this kind of stuff, but that doesn't mean that you have to. And what else? You're definitely going to want to get some more chips, boy, because they do they do not give you enough chips. You can get more of those at historical board gaming, as well as all the infantry and everything else. I've I've bought extra units for everybody, so I've got enough to play with. But then they've got uh, the World War One battle bucks. And I, I finally just used these for the first time the other day. But unlike the other uh, HBG Battle Bucks for World War II, these ones are two-sided, right? So there's some kind of weapon on one side and some dude on the other side, whoever that is. I don't know and I don't care. But again, you know, there's some dude on one side and there's a weapon on the other side there. So th those are pretty nice. Uh, two-sided uh, cash there. Those are, those are pretty nice. Um... And that's about it, I think. That's about it for uh, things that are not out of box that I'm using. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I'm, I think I'm going to get into doing a bit of strategy. Uh, when I do it, I'm not going to be doing it with um, those Zeppelins there. Because uh, when I do strategy videos, I prefer to do out of box uh, strategy. Uh, but uh, I will be using tournament rules though. What I mean is I'm going to just be using out of box units. I don't like to use house rule units when I'm doing uh, strategy videos because that's that's very particular, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> you know, not everybody's going to use uh, my same ho my house rules. You have your own house rules. But uh, a strategy video should only be um, basically what everybody has out of box, right? And so that's what it's going to be. And I think what I'll do is I'll do a central power strategy rather than each nation. I think I'll do a central power strategy and I'll do an allied power strategy. And then I have an idea for a third video, but uh, we'll see. I'll get to that uh, sometime afterwards, uh, maybe in the next week or so. So thanks for joining me today, everyone. I hope you have a good day. Um, that's all. Take care. General High Grenade out.